If you got an issue, dial that back. If you're not enjoying it, rethink your collecting because I've had to do that many times to like steer my path. I'm going, what am I doing? Getting the GI Joes, mint on card, 82, 83 to 89. You get that, cross the finish line and you go, now what? Do you ever just sit down and go, oh God, I just sat on the cat. Oh, and it bit my back. Are you, oh my God, cat. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm so sorry. I bit on, I, I sat on you. This is gonna be the most edited video, the most train wreckage video that I've ever done. The cat's fine. Justice Curry with you today. I have a unique video for you all. It's going to be about the pitfalls and the dangers and the negativity, but the light at the end of the tunnel of toy collecting. Now, I've been doing it a while now, many years, and I've introduced my beautiful wife, who is a licensed therapist. Um, so, without further ado, welcome. Put your hands together for Liz Curry. Yeah! I, I had to bribe her, beg her, plead her with her, have her sign releases, but she agreed to do a video with me. Um, we did one almost about a year ago talking about my struggle, the origin story of Justice Curry. I'll put a link up above with my struggle with alcohol and trading that destructive uh, mind and body addiction with a positive one, toy collecting. And we talk about, you know, plastic crack, an upcoming documentary I'm gonna be featured in. I'm gonna blow it, just talk about it nonstop when it actually finally comes out. But, you know, we make some comparison with plastic crack and toy addictions and, and whatnot. And unfortunately, there is some negativity. So with addressing it, identifying it, understanding it, you can better uh, combat it. So she, again, what's your background and your professional? So I'm a therapist and I specialize in working with people with addictions, a couple different types of specialties. Uh, so yeah, your behavior with collecting is very similar to that of many of my clients, believe it or not. Yes, yes. And, you know, some of her clients has, you know, some destructive sexual addictions or substance abuse and alcohol addictions. But, I mean, what what makes an addict? Now, an addict, you're, we, we talk about chasing the dragon. What does mm -hmm. chasing the dragon mean? Okay, so there's this concept of chasing the dragon. And what that means is that when... Um, you experience a high for the first time, your brain um, experiences a dopamine rush, right? And so it takes it to like a whole like a whole new level that you've never experienced before. But the problem is when people experience that rush, um, they, 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 kind of, they want to feel that over and over again. And unfortunately, once you experience that high, you'll never be able to reach that again. So let's say when um, Justice here gets a new uh, toy, as he calls it in the mail, um, and he's all excited and stuff, and it's the best toy he's ever gotten, and it's just his holy grail and he's so excited um if it's the you know if it's like the biggest achievement in his collection he'll basically never really be able to achieve that again so he'll always be trying to get more and more and more to try and experience that rush but the problem is he'll never be able to reach that height again it, so you're chasing the dragon the dragon is that high and and that's a complex crazy uh and i'm sure you've probably heard about that in health class and high school or whatnot um you know with you build up a tolerance to it. And there are some similarities with it. I, I remember the first rush of the figures I was getting in the mail, and I still experience many of those same rushes, but it's, uh, it's changed over the years to now my focus goes to making these YouTube videos and connecting with other collectors, showing off other people's things. And, and I'll tell you the truth, you, well, I'm going to interrupt you. What, what you're talking about here is an increased tolerance. And so when you basically start to like, like, okay, I got five new mint on card, whatever these G.I. Joe things are, um, in the mail. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This is great. So you get five more and it's not as exciting. So now I need 
these five but in better quality and so your your threshold for excitement goes up and up and up and so with justice here for example um he started collecting one thing whatever it was who knows if loose gi yeah, joes i would okay, never great. think in a million years i would get mint on card because like yeah because so he started out with these bins of loose gi joes and sorting them out and stuff and that was great for a while but then after a while that wasn't enough so he wanted more so then he goes to the mint on card um gi joes and so then from mint on card gi joes he goes to Mint on card uh, He-Man and loose He-Man. Artwork, and, and, uh, pre-production artwork. Um, this clear chandelier thing, apparently, as he calls the trans, it. Above. The translucent chandelier with clear type figures around my um, <laughs> my light source. So that's an example of how um, what used to work for him to get him like this rush uh, kind of like has transpired, and he has to go for new things to get that high because what he originally started with isn't working so much anymore. And and this is a serious topic. I mean, typically, it's not negative. I mean, it can be negative. Like surrounding myself in my toy room, you know, the friends I have met, the experiences, the awesome rushes of, of reclaiming that nostalgia. There's oh, tons and tons of positivity associated with it. But the negative sides, and, and what I'm here to tell you and be real with you, is if you're trying to find happiness, through a plastic object it's it's for you'll never achieve that there will never be a piece in your collection that you go if I own that it's gonna make me happy sure it's gonna make you happy momentarily and go wow this is awesome take pictures of it brag to your friends but the next day it's gonna be off to, and I know it from personal experience but what it can be for you though is like uh, uh, it can be a part of like your happiness pie if you will so if you picture a piece of pizza or a pie uh, a pizza Pizza pie. pie. Pizza pie. Uh, one slice of happiness can be the toys and can be a part of, you know, part of your life that you enjoy. Another slice is family. Another slice, hopefully, is your profession or whatever it is you do. So um, there's nothing wrong with looking for happiness in the toys, but it just can't be everything. And um, when people become so absorbed that it takes over their personal, professional, or social lives um, and start things start to become unbalanced, that's when you know it's becoming a problem. So nothing wrong with it. Have fun with it. Right. With, with it being a part of your life, but don't look to it for everything because you will be sorely disappointed. Correct. And I've, I've experienced that. You know, get I, I experienced the same joy with a $20 figure or a $1,000 figure. And I start realizing to myself, like, wh what am I doing? Why am I trying to... I ask him that all the time and he still doesn't... <laughs> Why am I trying to acquire this this super, you know, rare thing or whatnot? Is it going to make me happy? And I've changed and my collecting habits have evolved over time. Like I mentioned before, the recalled roadblock. It was a recalled uh, figure of G.I. Joe's in the 90s. It had a little piece that uh, went in people's eyes and they recalled it. So very limited production number of it. I'm like, oh, I want this, I want this, because it was rare. And when I acquired it, had it for a while, I'm like, why do I even have this? I have no sentimental attachment. I don't care about it. So I got rid of it. I sold it to someone that liked it. And now I'm slowly transitioning from just owning things that are rare so I can go, oh, I'm, I'm special, to things that I really care about. <laughs> you still seem to think you're pretty special for some reason. Yes, remember. my ego, my head exploding. <sighs> um, but some other negativity associated, again, this shouldn't be a doom and gloom kind of things. If you're experiencing some of these issues, hey, it's the first thing like with an alcoholic is to admit that you have a problem, to admit that you're an alcoholic. Because you go, you go, or at least I was, Oh, I'm not an alcoholic. It's those homeless people on the street. They can't, you know, keep their life under control and they can't keep family and jobs so, and money. But here's the trick though, is that like, so when you look at like substance addiction, alcohol or drugs or whatever, in order to really say, okay, you know, I have a problem and I need to be in recovery from this, you have to stop entirely. And I think with this, you know, even if, if it starts to get out of control and you want to say, okay, this is, this is becoming too much. I need to really back off moderation doesn't work either that's like saying okay i'm just gonna use a little cocaine to get by you know so it's a really tough balance to say to it, it's got to be really difficult i imagine to pull back and say okay the toy stuff is too much i'm just gonna do it a little bit and then you have the people who purge their whole collection but then they come back to it eventually and then they have to start all over and whatnot that all comes down from that, that it's a lack of balance that they're having in their collecting and and for some people it's all or nothing for some people they can back off and just say okay i'm gonna get a little bit just i mean but that only lasts for so long too before right. you're back at it full force. Yep, and a big a big problem that I've noticed in the collecting community or times that I've bought large collections, um, it's not every time, but some of the times, or I've heard stories is people 
overbuy. So they buy, 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 accumulate their oh, little rushes here and there, buy, 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 buy. They don't even have collection rooms to display it. Or they have a room, but it just stays in boxes and totes. And I don't expect you to collect like me. You do you. You, I you collect, don't collect like him. Right. You collect how you want to collect, what you want to collect, how you want to collect. I'm not here to judge you, tell you. I'm just here to tell you my personal observations and opinion. But you know what they say about opinions. You have a lot of them. I know that much. They're like, they're like a holes. Everyone has one, and, mm -hmm. and yours stinks. That, I, what? I'll cut that part out. Did you right. just insult me? No, it's a saying. Google it. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one, but did I? You get... don't say when yours stinks. I messed that up. This is horrible. And again, you're really bad at sayings too. I'm sorry. I make up sayings and make up words. Thank God I have my soulmate here. Like. When I was putting on a shirt, I put this game over shirt that I wore for my bachelor party umpteen years ago, and it has the the guy all sad and the girl happy game over like marriage. And I go, can I wear this? It's funny. And she's like, I don't care. I think the best part of it is that he asked me for permission to wear it, to do oh, one of geez. his videos. That's now, pretty now cool. Now you're embarrassing me. I'll edit that part out later. Um, but what I was getting to is finances. F people can start making toys a priority over cell phone bills and food and house payments and whatnot and all their money starts getting dumped into this collecting whereas they the real priorities in life start kind of going to the wayside but in, in addition to it can, it can seem a little bit like gambling where it's like okay but i need to put all this money into it because then it'll pay off really good right. um kind of like gambling well if i just pull this lever one more time i'm gonna win big um so when you start to um have that again we're going back to that word unbalance um in your life with putting all your money into one thing and not a, not your responsibilities that's a flat out sign of addiction right there you know yeah. okay well i just need um two She's more ounces around of, my room She's yeah. like let me no, have an example I just, you know like but when you think about it like people will um say okay i'm well no i'm gonna leave those other examples out go ahead <laughs> you can edit that out too um, I was going to give a good analogy, but I won't. There's a lot of edits going on in this video, probably none of Can which, I will, this? which I'll actually edit the, the Battle Cat Bouncer. Um, the, the finances, the time, there is a time. huge amount, and that's kind of where we've run into pitfalls in our own personal relationship over the years, is amassing this collection without using my personal finances takes a lot of flipping buying large collections keeping a small portion selling all the rest of them for <sighs> a profit taking that profit so then i can dump it into buying this figure this figure this and figure. then it'll be time to put the kids to bed and i'll be like babe i need you up here i need your help putting the kids to bed and he'll be like i have i just need to package 10 more things and i'm like i don't care about your stupid packaging get up here and help me right so every once in a while i kind of have to like keep them in line and, and i put the rationale of Hey, this is like a second job sometimes, you know, someday when it comes time to start selling this, it'll be, you know, a little nest egg and, but she doesn't see the here and now. She's like, well, I, I want, need your I help need putting your the kids to bed now. right now. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, no, I'm on this roller coaster. I can't get off. But this I'm, feels I'm in so the middle good. of this giant deal. I don't want, I don't want it to fall apart. Chasing or, that dragon. It is. It is. And you, you're at least... And I'm upstairs with the dragons trying to put them to bed by myself. So, so this is ironic video because I'm talking about addicts and, and pitfalls, but I mean, you're looking at but the, we no, have, but the, the number one real. addict we have fun right with here of, of toys. Um, in, in being real and talking about my personal life, including you, my kids, and some of these real life issues that arise. And they're kind of taboo. They're not really talked about a lot. In the toy collecting community um but i just again in a roundabout way i wanted to make broad generalizations about issues with your time your finances and not enjo not enjoying it you're just buying to buy looking for that happiness that'll never come through it uh what i find some of the true joy that i've experienced in this hobby are the friendships the relationships we've met a lot of toy friends and they brought their children and their kids over like just motu joe came over yeah. a couple days ago oh, and his kids, are and his kids were playing with my kids and whatnot and i would have never met them if it wasn't for this community and and just that the number one rush i get though the number one major like oh i i need you to keep feel alluding to your vein did you previously shoot up or something i've never shot up or used hard drugs in my life 
but I am a law enforcement officer. I am around people day in and day out that do make horrible decisions and have gone down that uh, that path in life. But I I had this awesome point. I was gonna make it. And so here's my request. So after you watch this video, if you have questions for me or for Justice on how we make this work, as far as me putting up with this toy collecting, him putting up with me nagging, um, views as far as the psychological perspective of, uh, of um, collecting and all that kind of stuff, post them in the comments because I want to do this again with him, but I told him it can't just be his questions, I want actual questions from people who watch the videos. So I'm willing to uh, give him a hard time all day about his collecting because he puts up with it and I love him. Yes. So shoot me so shoot some questions uh, uh, on that that thing down below that thing I'm about the, thing the where comments you, like, put comments and after stuff. you hit subscribe and after you hit like and if you want to share go ahead too but comment she reads them I read them I try to respond to every single one of them yeah. I actually don't read them because I don't even know how to log into YouTube and read comments have you ever watched one of my videos before no Again, I'm gonna have to edit that part out later. You know, all my friends on YouTube, all you guys watching, we're gonna go. Your wife doesn't watch. I'm your around videos. you all the time. Why do I want to watch a video you of you on a, a video. video? I live in a video. <laughs> you live. Justice Curry here. Oh, yeah. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> well, the best part is whenever this is he spiraled goes. spiraled out of control. <clears throat> whenever God. he goes to look at his. This is never gonna get posted. Oh, you realize is... that? I'm never gonna Fine. post this. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm back here, and I lost. You you had a major point, like the secret of life, the million dollar answer to life. But and you ruined I, it as I usual. I ruined it. I ruined it as usual. Um, so I had fun talking with her. Uh, we wanted to do a video. And with that uh, last one we did a year ago, the origin story, Justice Curry, I had more, more people private message me than ever before saying, hey, I'm going through this issue right now. What do I do? A lot of these people, I... Put in touch with my wife and she she helped them or gave some encouraging words to uh if they're if they were going through their own struggles with substance abuse so i really appreciate it you taking the time to watch this um if you feel like you're kind of going losing the joy in it oh that's what i was gonna say thank god this came full circle i was building up to this part saying the number one thrill and i was alluding to this that i get the number one rush and then i lost the train of thought because we're the my wife and i are the tangent you know king and queen number one r rush when i go to a collection like i buy collections a lot i have collectors or i see something for sale or this old grandma on craigslist or facebook marketplace i got these toys and a few boxes up in the attic the thrill of not knowing what's in there going what if there's mint on card battle beast or New Hope Star Wars figures on card, or or you know Blue Snaggletooth, or this or that. Just the thrill of the unknown, the hunt. That is what I chase. That is my dragon. I just went and bought a massive GI Joe collection, going through boxes and finding stuff, bringing it home, sorting it. That is my happy place. I enjoy doing it. I love sharing my thoughts, even though some of them may not be correct. Again, these are my opinions. These are not necessarily facts I'm sure there's a lot of other issues you know the finite details we could get into about some other negativity or I could have someone on watching this go oh you're wrong you know you're blah 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 whatever I don't care I just want to share my passion with you guys I want to share my love with you and and just make memories have fun with it if you got an issue dial that back if you're not enjoying it rethink your collecting because I've had to do that many times to like steer my path I'm going what am I doing getting the GI Joe's mint on card 82 83 to 89 you get that cross the finish line and you go now what do you ever just sit down and go oh god I just sat on the cat oh and it bit my back are you oh my god cat <laughs> are you all right I'm so sorry I bit on I, I sat on you. This is going to be the most edited video, the most train wreckage video that I've ever done. The cat's fine. Um, I have kids. The kids are constantly playing with this sucker. But what I was saying, you know, the scary part of crossing that finish line going, okay, I'm done. No, you're never done. You're just chasing a new thing, a new line, 
supernaturals, and humanoids, G.I. Joe, Star Wars, Battle Beasts, whatever, modern figures, there's never ending, but space becomes an issue, and when there's a new toy that I want, I don't like putting it in the back room and just saying I have it. If I can't display it, it doesn't go on my collection. Uh, or I don't hang on to it. It goes into the for sale. So I have to make a lot of tough decisions. These are first world problems. Going, okay, I need that space up there. That means I got to get rid of what's up there. Or take what's up there and change it and put it over there. And just kind of swirled win my collection. Um, if you've ever watched me before, um, then you know that it is 360 degrees. G.I. Joe's. He-Man's, He-Man, uh, all sorts of things. And it started to what my wife refers to as leak outside the, into the kids' kind of toy area. But um, some of my stuff has also in that corner and, you know, started mixing with the children's stuff and, and whatnot. But we have a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait till my kids grow up and come out of the house so then I can fill their bedrooms up with this nonsense as well. Totally kidding. I love these memories with my children. And on that note, I'm going to go upstairs and finish tucking them in. So hit the subscribe. Uh, last but not least, oh gosh, last thing I wanted to mention. Um, I talked about Motu Joe. Uh. Motu Joe is one of my good friends. He owns a uh, t-shirt company called Retro Rags Limited. I'll put a description, but he has some amazing, amazing uh, t-shirt designs in there. And he said, hey, Justice, you know that one of you riding Battle Cat dressed as low light? I'll offer it to your fans. I'll put it on the website. So I'll put a link to it. And if you're a Patreon, I don't know if you ever heard of what Patreons are. I'll also put a link to that. It's kind of like my website. So if you want like box things sent from me and you know your name in the end credits and contribute to this channel um you can check out my patreon see what that's all about but mochu joe said hey your patreons can have special discounts if they want to buy your shirt or whatnot so there's a few different options a few different tangents things that you can check out with the patreon and then retro rags limited seeing what kind of shirts he offers because all sorts of really neat original uh, designs by artists in the, the community. So check it out. If you want a Justice Curry shirt, check that out. If you want to contribute and be part of my Justice Curry family, Patreon. Love you all. Take care. God bless. Hey guys, Justice Curry here. I have children, so they're gonna, I only have a few precious seconds. What I want to talk to you is these amazing Justice Curry shirts. Yes, available in all sizes shapes, colors. My buddy uh, Motu Joe has a website called Retro Rags Limited. Um, he put these shirts on there. Why they're special is because I like them. They're awesome. It's low light riding battle cat, but 100% of the proceeds go to charity. I don't make a dime. He don't make a dime. I just thought it was a cool thing and a way to plug his website, which has also amazing, amazing shirts like the one I'm wearing now. Uh, a lot of He-Man, G.I. Joe designs. He'll take vintage patches, put them on hats. You name it, he's there. So check out my description. Uh, there's a link to it. Retro Rags Limited. Take care, guys. Love you all. What do I do with What do I do with my... Okay, first of all, it's too low. Bring it up a little bit. What do I do? You step out of frame. I'll bring, I'll introduce you. Step over here. He oh got it! He oh got it! He oh got it! He oh got it! He oh got it!